my city, to your world is wrong, you watch your city world. Welcome to City World. Hi, I'm Shy West. Today we have an exclusive interview with Zarak. Let's get started. What's up? This is Zarak. I hail from CNC. You all know it as Cincinnati. I'm here doing an interview with my man, Big T, Todd. We're in the house. Oh man, I've been in the music game for a while. As far back as I can re really remember wanting to do it, age nine. Well, one thing I like about the music industry is that I have an opportunity or a platform to put music out that speaks to the times we're in and speaks to the vibe of people who are looking and ready for artists that can bring something to uplift and now already beat down the die the downtrodden some more so, yeah. the different flavors I bring to the game uh, you can get some reggae get some ballads get some down right you know, love vibes like uh, between the relationship between a man and a woman and you also get some flavor of uplifting um, the women in our community, because I don't think enough of that's done. So, I mean, the flavor is all over the place, it's all over the place. So you can't lock me down as to just one type of music, but you can lock me down and say, hey, Zorak will bring not only a, a love vibe or a ballad, but we're gonna go across the board and uh, hit you up with some real live uh, uplifting, uh, 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 Uplifting vibe. Like you're gonna give me something that I can groove to and get a message. Well, uh, when I do do a live uh, uh, performance, I get a tremendous vibe. I mean, it has surprised me the vibe that I get, not only from adults but the little children, which is the most inspiration of all the vibes that I get back whenever I perform live. I performed in Washington, D.C. I performed in Philadelphia, New York, Brooklyn, New York. I've performed several times in Brooklyn, New York, baby. I love me in New York. <laughs> and uh, I performed in Jackson, Mississippi, Jackson, Tennessee, uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, I performed also, of course, in Cincinnati. And I performed in Raleigh, North Carolina. So that's just to name a few places I performed in. What I want to walk away with is that Zarat brought the noise, that he brought it down. He, he, he brought the music right to my ears. I vibed the whole time. And if I had a chance to do it all over again, I'd do the exact same thing. A legacy is what the whole purpose of me producing music and making music and singing music and playing music is that I can leave something behind once this existence of me that you see right here has long gone and disappeared and has gone away of all earth. There will be music left behind, a legacy of the work that I have been blessed to make, sing, and produce. So that, in a nutshell, is the legacy that fulfills me and, and lets me know that everything that I've done up to now, as now, is in full circle. The legacy is the 360. This is the rap from my city to your world. You've been watching City World. City World. Ha, ha, ha.
That was a great interview. Stay tuned and we'll be back with more City World after this. take you on a historical journey with critical eyes sundown as we learn more about the black madonna check this out the following copyrighted material was presented under the provisions of fair use all rights reserved were applicable <laughs> Thank you. 
Madonna sweet. We're going to get on down now. One, two, three, four. This is a journey into history. One, two, three, four. From childhood, we've been told countless times that these specific images are the unquestionable likeness of the Madonna and her son. Most attempts to question this have been met with resistance or ignorance. Are these images accurate? Several centuries of evidence shows otherwise. 625 1988 PBS, The Bill Moyer Show. Late comparative mythologist, lecturer, and writer Joseph Campbell proclaims the antique model for the Madonna actually is Isis with Horus at her breast. 1833, Godfrey Higgins, English historian, writes the following in his monumental work, Anacalypsis, Volume 1, pages 138 to 139. In all the Romish countries of Europe, the god Christ, as well as his mother, are described in their old pictures and statues to be black. The Romish priests, they have endeavored to disguise the fact by pretending that the child had become black by the smoke of the candles. How came the candles not to blacken the white of the eyes, the teeth, and the shirt? Their real blackness is not to be questioned for a moment. Several other European historians and clergy, such as Gerald Massey, T.W. Doan, Kelsey Graves, Conyers Middleton, and Albert Churchward would say the exact same thing. As stated before, the European Madonna, also called the Virgin Mary, has its origins in the goddess Aset and her son Heru, known as Isis and Horus in the Greek language. In the book Black Women in Antiquity, Danita Red tells how Aset and Heru were not only worshipped in Africa, but that this worship had spread over most of the Western world at that time. After the Greeks and Romans turned Egypt into a Greco-Roman territory from 323 BC onwards, they co-opted the worship of Aset and adapted it to their own standards, even depicting many of their own Greek and Roman goddesses with African features and dark skin as shown here and here. Soon, a foreign religion that came to be called Christianity began to spread across Europe. As it did, disagreements arose, resulting in several conferences devised to decide the official ground rules. Simultaneously, images began to appear, especially not long after the Council of Ephesus in 431 AD, where the Virgin Mary was declared as the Mother of God. Danita Red says, in ancient Constantinople, there lived a painter named Luke. Known as Holy Luke because of his pious nature, he spent most of his life painting pictures of the Virgin Mary. Accounts of these early portraits of the Virgin Mary mention that she was depicted with dark skin and Ethiopian facial features. She also speaks about how multitudes came to worship this image, which is something that still happens today, but in a private manner. Here is a picture of Pope John Paul II bowing to a black Madonna in Poland, which is also done by many popes today. January 730 AD, the iconoclasm. Byzantine Emperor Leo III issues an edict ordering the destruction of religious icons. Many of the Black Madonnas are destroyed. However, many were hidden and several still exist all over Europe today. British psychic and author Cassandra Eason states, The Black Madonna is the hidden secret in the heart of Catholicism, the old, often demonized pagan goddess. In some cases, Black Madonnas are the oldest of statues. 
Cassandra also states that the majority of them are in France. Italian Joseph Ciora tells of a storefront Black Madonna Chapel built by Sicilian immigrants in Manhattan. He quotes an Abbot Spitaleri who stated in 1751 that the exceedingly miraculous image of the Most Holy Mary, who with marvelous portent, came from Africa. BlackHistoryFactorFiction.com states, there are about 400 to 500 Black Madonnas in Europe. There are also several places here in the United States with Black Madonnas. Now, after seeing all these instances of Black Madonnas, as well as the multitudes of people worshipping them, why is this one still considered unquestionable? Let's go back again to medieval Europe. During this time, the Roman Catholic Church had taken control of Christianity and much of Europe itself. In Florence, Italy, there were several influential and powerful families and artists who began to paint biblical personalities in the likeness of their friends and family members. The Florentine.net speaks of an Italian monk named Fra Filippo Lippi saying Lippi, then 50 years old, encountered Lucrezia Butti. He immediately fell in love with the beautiful young Florentine nun. He convinced the mother superior of Santa Margarita to allow Lucrezia to model as the Virgin Mary for another commission he was painting. Here's a picture from the National Gallery of Art saying the exact same thing from 1440. There were also several powerful families in Florence. One of these families was the Medici, another were the Borgias. Painter Sandro Botticelli's 1480 painting, Madonna del Magnificat, shows the Virgin Mary modeled by Piero de Medici's wife, Lucrezia Ternabuni, and her daughter, Lucrezia de Medici, as the baby Jesus. Lucrezia Borgia and her brother Cesar were used as models for the Virgin Mary and Jesus as shown in these pictures from various sources from the late 1400s to early 1500s. See the obvious similarities? Some still may be saying, what's wrong with using these pictures? Let's connect the dots. Number one, the Borgia family was used literally as an inspiration for a high grossing crime epic and top selling 1972 film. What film was it? The Godfather. Reformation.org, quoting page 371 of the book, the Family, by Mario Puzo, says Mario was fascinated with Renaissance Italy, and especially with the Borgia family. He swore that they were the original crime family, and that their adventures were much more treacherous than any of the stories he ever told. Number 2. Rodrigo Borgia, a.k.a. Pope Alexander VI, drafts Inter Caterra. In 1493, with such phrases as, the Christian religion be exalted and be everywhere increased, and that barbarous nations be overthrown and brought to the faith itself. A debate raged on afterwards between those for and against slavery. 1537, not all popes were pro-slavery. One example of some anti-slavery popes, Pope Paul III issues Sublimus Deus, a decree that while recognizing the humanity of those called Indians did little to stop the brutal colonization of them. However, there was not much of a debate at all concerning another group. 1564, John Hawkins, considered the pioneer of the English slave trade, sails to West Africa in one of Queen Elizabeth's personal ships. What was the ship called? The Jesus of Lubeck. He also had this coat of arms on the ship. With all the brutal conquest that was going on at that time, especially as European images of Mary and Jesus begin to proliferate, it is not out of place to suspect that their use was deliberately employed to subjugate thousands of people. Images themselves aren't necessarily good or bad. It's the history and psychological context, intent and effect of them that should be questioned 
and understood, especially since we're taught these things subliminally in our early years. Why do I say that? Let's go back to 1939. Psychologists Kenneth and Mamie Clark gather some black children between the ages of six and nine, present them several times with both white and black dolls, ask them seven pertinent questions about the dolls, and then finally ask the children to pick a doll. Most of the children picked the white dolls. Repeatedly, the children said the black dolls were quote-unquote bad and picked the white ones as they were quote-unquote prettier and nicer. 2005, Kiri Davis, a young black woman filmmaker, does an updated version of the test in her short film, A Girl Like Me. Sadly, the results were the same. 2009, Good Morning America does the test again. The black boy said both dolls were pretty, but the black girl said the white one was the pretty one. This mindset, subliminally taught to most of us in childhood, as previously shown, persist through adulthood in many. Another example, Dr. Yosef A. A. Ben Yakinen in his book, Are Black Seminarians and Black Clergy Without a Black Theology. Dr. Ben, as he is known, tells how the late Reverend James Holloman put up a black Madonna and installed an African-centered theological library in a church basement, only to be met with harsh treatment and people leaving the church. Sadly, Reverend Holloman died of a massive cerebral hemorrhage. I leave you all with this. Whatever it is you believe in, seek and understand the origins, history, and developmental context within which it developed. And above all, do not stop searching for the truth. Thank you for watching episode two of Critical Eye Sundial, brought to you by City World. From my city to your world. Viewers are always encouraged to log on to pvco.com as well as the following for more information. History. Wow, how we have the nation is alive that Stay with us. We have more city world coming your way after this.
Kansas City Row. Hi, I'm Chai West. If you like cooking in your home, you're gonna love this as we take you into Lily's Kitchen in the Hunger Zone. Hi, welcome to City Row. My name is Alicia, and I'm gonna show you how to make stuffed shells. First, you use jumbo shells, and you put them in the boiling water. And after my shells are done, I will be back right after this. The queen she be, highly, divinely. Her perpetual patent exclusion from the popular public pantheon reminds me how she, many she's, several scores of her sheep progeny were scorched and scorned, forbidden and forlorn, sinisterly sworn into sexist secrecy for centuries. Sleeping sycophants still steadily say she could never represent the divine feminine. Upon close inspection, one finds distortions deeper than ancient Kushite baptismal pools early Christians went swimming in. Sunday school lessons stress and never question the images taught ya. But evidence shows the models used were Medici's and Borgia's. We can't afford to disregard the design and the history that could destroy the deception, dismantle the mystery. Why aren't more of us searching and looking? Smell the stew, those that dig for truth for cooking. Images themselves aren't inherently problematic, but when paired with devious, dubious, dehumanizing context intent and events, the denominator is synaptic static. What's crazy and wild is that the original origin points to a certain Eastern mother and child, a comedic Ethiopian ethereal emissary of the highest eternal echelon. Behind closed doors, there's much value to a black image going on. She beckons, she calls for more to share her story, set her free from her prescribed walls. Who is she? See the wicked weaver's web untangle. She's the black Madonna, the original guardian angel.
going to show you how to make stuff ships. I use ground turkey instead of pork. I'm sorry, beef, because some people do not like to eat pork. Some people feel like ground turkey is healthier, and I like to eat them. And then once I put my ground turkey in the bowl, I add cream cheese. Which I have let out, let sit out all day long and soften. You don't want to use it when it's still hard out the refrigerator. Put it in with the meat. Scrape the rest of that off because we don't need to waste. Waste not or what not. And then I add chopped spinach. Mix the three ingredients together. I'm making a bit of a mess, but it's all good. We're just gonna try it back in here. I promise my table is clean. It's just gonna be my kids eating anyway. So if they get sick, I'll take care of them. It helps to have your meat already still steaming. Then you add it to the cream cheese and spinach. Mash it up. It will soften more once the heat from the meat starts to heat up. It's a little messy, but I promise you it's going to taste very good. take very long to prepare this. It's about 15 minutes prep time. Your kids will love it, your friends will love it, your family will love it. You'll be a hit and a success. And your Italian style family there. Then I add a little bit of spaghetti sauce to it. Any type of flavor that you choose is fine. That just helps to give it the correct consistency for when I stuff it in the shells. Set, set that aside. I'm going to check out my shells. And they still need to cook a little while longer. In the meantime, I already have a mixture set up over here. Oh. Can't wait to eat this, which I'll add to this mixture here. Exact same thing. Just prep a little bit before this goes. And now that our stuffing is ready, I will be right back and you will come back and join me in City World making stuffed shells. Be right back after this.
was amazing. I don't know what happened, but whatever it was, I mean, it just kind of fell. It just flashed, man. You got to see it. If anybody has a video take, I would recommend that you go on YouTube and put it uploaded immediately. Some of cold Shields over here to the table. Now this is a bit of a messy process, but it's all good. Whatever you have on your fingers, lick it up. I'm just kidding. maybe not, because everybody might not know your smart for sure. One step shell. That's another step shell. And you do want to stuff it pretty much. You know, you don't want to have it overflowing, but you want to have plenty of stuffing in the shell. That's the way you kind of fill it up. I love cooking. I love eating. This is one of my favorites. I'm going to start one more. And here in the pan. I'm 
going to take my spaghetti sauce and garnish it over the top of the shells. Stuffed gel, one more thing to add. And that would be the wonderful, wonderful cheese. Cheese makes everything good. All right, there you are. See how to make stuffed gels. I'm going to put this pan in the oven. I already have another pan in the oven. And I'll be right back with you in just a minute. Thank you for watching City World. A queen she be, highly, divinely. Her perpetual patent exclusion from the popular public pantheon reminds me how she, many she's, several scores of her sheep progeny were scorched and scorned, forbidden and forlorn, sinisterly sworn into sexist secrecy for centuries. Sleeping sycophants still steadily say she could never represent the divine feminine. Upon close inspection, one finds distortions deeper than ancient Kushite baptismal pools early Christians went swimming in. Sunday school lessons stress and never question the images taught ya. But evidence shows the models used were Medici's and Borgia's. We can't afford to disregard the design and the history that could destroy the deception, dismantle the mystery. Why aren't more of us searching and looking? Smell the stew those that dig for truth are cooking. Images themselves aren't inherently problematic, but when paired with devious, dubious, dehumanizing context and tempting events, the denominator is synaptic static. What's crazy and wild is that the original origin points to a certain Eastern mother and child, a comedic Ethiopian ethereal emissary of the highest eternal echelon. Behind closed doors, there's much bounty to a black image going on. She beckons, she calls for more to share her story, set her free from her prescribed walls. Who is she? See the wicked weaver's web untangled. She's the black Madonna, the original guardian angel. Hello, 
in Cincinnati. We're about to get onto the bus, going down to the Stilettos, Polos, and Old School Boat Ride, the last annual boat ride of the season, a sold-out event. We're very excited. This is a one-in-a-lifetime event. Come on along and join the ride with us. From my city to your world. Hi, it's Lily with City World, and we're back making stuff shift. Now you get a chance to see the finished product. It's a delicious, delicious dish. Take my stuff show off. Put it on the couch. Bon appetit. Gotta let you know what it tastes like. Mm. It's living. We just made shit stuff shells at City World. Thank you. Come back and see me again.
To my spear, I blast the atomic wave through your eyes and through your ear. I'm a child of the storm, I was born with no fear. And now is my time. She cuts you as the dust, then sweep you in the yard so the grass can get the crust. Till a tear let it fall, then I'll fuck it if you must. More precious than the platinum and the diamonds that you lust. I am rising sun. There's nowhere to run, there's nowhere to run, there's nowhere to hide. Nowhere to hide. Mash up your body and your brain Sticky do my do Sticky diggy diggy do my do Kill you for show Break up the cash, I'll take the dough Sticky do my D Sticky diggy diggy do my D I'll set you free There's no rise up above your knee Sticky do my day Sticky diggy diggy do my day Some boy gets slain, kill your entity There's nowhere to run There's nowhere to run That was a hot song by King Fuji. 
And that brings us to the end of this segment of City World. But be sure to check us out at www.pvco.com. From my city to your world, I'm your host, Child West. Thank you.